يا ذا الأسماء الحسنى يا خالقنا غفرانا نسألك وأنت الأسماء نأمل عفوك سبحانه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. فصل السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن شاء الله بإذن الله with the help of Allah with only His help we start a new book today which is on the أسماء الله الحسنى which is the ninety nine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now these names of Allah, the names of Allah, they're not only restricted to 99. Because it has been said inside, it has been said in hadith that in various hadith and also in the Quran you will find names that are outside the 99. However, in a hadith of Tirmidhi, also in Bukhari, you find that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu has reported an entire 99 names in a whole sequence from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And there's great benefit in these names, which inshallah we will, we will go through uh, one by one. But just as we start this, I'd like to mention that we are covering the book on the 99 names of Allah by Imam Shamsuddin Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Ahmad Ansari al Qurtubi. Imam Qurtubi is one of those scholars who has, who has been or who, who is one of the greatest scholars of his time. One of the greatest scholars of his time. He passed away in 671 Hijra. He was in Cordoba, which is Qurtuba. Uh, Islamic name for it was Qurtuba and Cordoba in Spain, which was an Islamic uh, country. He has a tafsir, very famous uh, tafsir, which is in several volumes. And if you actually th look at Imam Qurtubi's tafsir, you'll be amazed at how much knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given him. On every single ayah, on every word, he's able to spend pages and pages uh, just continuing to expand on the meanings that are there in, in, these, uh, in, in the ayats of, of the Qur'an. Anyway, Imam Qurtubi rahimahullah, he starts off this, um, he starts off this book by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says that we thank Allah for guiding us to these names, guiding us to, the, to recognizing his names. Because these are the names that give us a recognition to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would not know Allah without these names. So a great thanks to him and a great, great uh, thing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has done for us in reporting these things to, to the ummah, uh, the, the actual asma or the names of the ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-A'raf, which is the seventh surah, Ayah number 180. Allah has said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Allah has many beautiful names. So Allah has beautiful names. For Him, to Him alone belong these beautiful names. فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا So now ask Allah through these names. So what Allah has done in this ayah of Surah Al-A'raf, the 180th verse of Surah Al-A'raf is, He's asking us to specifically ask him by saying, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Malik, Ya Quddus, Ya Salam, Ya Mu'min, Ya Muhaymin, Ya Aziz, Ya Jabbar, Ya Khaliq, Ya Bari, Ya Musawir, and so on and so forth. Allah is asking us to ask him through, the, through these names. Now, you will find certain, there are certain ulama who have, um, who make it a practice. When, they, when they're making a dua, they go through all these names one by one. From Ya Allah, or Wallahu Ladi La ilaha illahu, and then they will say Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, all the way to the last name, Ya Sabur, 
of the 99 names reported in uh, that particular hadith and then they will make dua then they will make dua because Allah has said in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-Araf that to Allah belong these names and he's asking us to call him through these names so they call him there's some other ulama um, I've come across beautiful uh, duas that they've, they've got one way is to actually name that they mention every name and with that name they they mention something uh, in the hadith or in the Quran to do with that name so for example they might say um, when they come to Ya Samir and Ya Basir Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has has a dua Allahumma innaka tasma'u kalamana wa tara makanana oh Allah you are hearing all our words that we are saying at this moment you see our exact space our place in at this moment and, and then he continues to say dua. So when they will come to Samir, they will say that dua. When they come to another name of Allah, um, for example, they might come across um, Rabb. And there are several, several um, ahadith uh, and, and Quran cats as well to do with using the name Rabb, which is the provider. And they will say those du'as under those, or when they reach those names. And it's a lengthy du'a, it's a lengthy du'a, but some ulama or some, or some of the salaf or the predecessors have taken that. Some others have taken a stance in calling a few of these names, which is fine. You can say whichever of these names you want, whenever you want, and call Allah. You can just say, Ya Allah, and make your du'as. You can just say, now some ulama subhanallah, they found benefit and look, not everything you, you must find when you do something, not everything you have to find. If you want to do something personal, I'm saying, if you want to do something personal, you just want to do it yourself. You don't have to find a hadith for everything you want to do, as long as it's within certain parameters. For example, if somebody wants to now go into sujood, and in sujood they want to just, you know, say, you know, okay, Subhan Rabbi al-A'la is there, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi is there, Subhanallah Rabbi al-A'la al-Azim, or Subhan, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, and many of these different du'as are there to say in the, in the sujood. And you will even find some du'as from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa specifically he said in the sujood. However, if somebody wants to say, if somebody wants to say, Allahumma razuqni hadha, Oh Allah, give me this, or oh Allah, grant me this. And they don't know the Arabic, but they want to say, Allahumma razuqni hadha, Allahumma razuqni hadha, oh Allah, provide me this, oh Allah, provide me this. So they're after something from Allah, and they want to do it in sujood, and they want to do it in two rakat salah. Now, you're not going to find a hadith specifically that you should say this, uh, especially if you don't know the Arabic. But there's something that I, I, I tell people, that you can actually say this. If you, if you don't know the Arabic, you don't know how to ask Allah in Arabic. But you go into sujood and you want to ask Allah this particular thing. Give me this. Now how are you going to say it? So if you, if you know just this phrase, oh Allah grant me this. And in your mind, you bring that thing in your mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to know what, you, what you're after. And he will... He will, inshallah, if, if he wills, he will grant it to you. But you won't, my point is, you won't find a hadith for this. So is it wrong of me to tell people to say, Allahumma razuqni hadha? Well, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. Because there's nothing that is against this in the, in the sharia. See, sometimes what you have to look at is, if, if it's something that you're doing on a personal level, or a few individuals are doing it, but there's nothing in the sharia to say that you're doing something against it, then it's fine for you to do it. And, and there's no mumana, there's nothing that, that, is, that is wrong to go ahead and do, do a practice like this. However, if the large part of the ummah starts to believe that this is the way to ask Allah, Allahumma razuqni hadha, Allahumma razuqni hadha, and let's just have it in the mind. And they make it a practice, a big custom, and people start to make it a tradition. And generation now, after generation, people are now going to look at it as this is the way to ask Allah, and it's not in the sunnah to say Allahumma razuqni hadha. Now it will, it will become a bid'ah. Now it will become a bid'ah because now a large part of the ummah or part of the ummah, even if it's part of the ummah, they believe that this is something which you must do in this manner to get what you want. Then, it, then it's, it's 
on, that, on those people to steer away from that and to do something different. Okay? So, for example, in the, in the Asma'ullah al-Husna, certain ulama have used certain names, certain names, a number of times, calling him. And they found that the dua, or whatever they wanted, has been accepted. Okay? They found that. And if somebody has experienced that, they're allowed to go to other people and to tell them, um, I have experienced this, um, I'd like you to experience this uh, as well. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. As long as the, the ummah in, in a large portion does not make it or does not feel or does not think, believe that this is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu This is something in the deen that we must do in this manner. So one thing I want to say, for example, the name Latif, which is Allah is so delicately, so intimate. Uh, he's, he's, so, he, he's so gentle with love and intimacy with his servants. And some ulama have found that to say Ya Latif a thousand times brings a great amount of rahmah and mercy of Allah towards them. So they'll say, Ya Latifu, Ya Latifu, Ya Latifu, Ya Latif, and so on. Again, look, you don't have to do this. I'm not saying you have to do this. But some ulama will find, uh, some ulama or some, some great individuals of this ummah have found that to say certain names with certain numbers will give benefit. Now, some others are completely against this. And they will say, we should not fixate a certain number to these names. And that's fine if you want to do that. But what we want to establish is, for example, one thing Imam Qurtubi says here, which is if you're calling Allah's name and you want to get, get His mercy, it's nice to know the meanings of these names. What is it? Who is it that you're calling? Because one is ilm and one is irfan. One is knowledge and one is recognition. Knowledge is when we know what is about what, what the thing is about. What one is Irfan, which is recognition. It's a deeper understanding of the name. So that is exactly what we're trying to establish through this book. Which is we want to gain a deeper establish of, of knowing the names of Allah so that we can come closer to Him by asking Him these names. Furthermore, Imam Qurtubi says that in Bukhari and Muslim, there's, there's a hadith from Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu who says, in anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isma mi'atan illa wahida man ahsaha dakhla al-janna Allah has 99 names 100 but one meaning that one less than 100 whosoever ahsaha whosoever will do ahsaha and I'll come to that meaning, they will enter Jannah. Now what does Ahsaha mean? Whosoever will do this, they will enter Jannah. Now Imam Qurtubi goes into the whole of this meaning of what Ahsaha is. And the predominant, the dominant meaning of it is that whosoever will, will commit it to themselves. Commit to them. Now how does it mean that, how do you commit to these names? <clears throat> Imam Qurtubi says, some, narration, some ulama have said this word is ahsa'aha, ahsa'aha, which would mean that you commit to teaching these names to others. And you commit to teach them in its fullest meaning. But then he says that that is not the, basically that is not the most common understanding of that hadith, uh, of, of that word ahsa'aha. It's not ahsa'aha, it's actually ahsaha, which is more common. One of the meanings ulama have said is that, that you become a person who looks, searches for these names. Searches for these names. So what you do though, then is you look in the Quran and you try and find the names that are related to, for example, you find the name Rahman. Where is Rahman in the Quran? So you search for that. You find the name Wali, and you, f you look in the Qur'an, where are these names of Wali in the Qur'an? So this is searching and trying to find these names. Another type of search, which I found certain people of knowledge, what they do is, they look for the occasion they are in, and they will s look for a name of the 99 names, 
to use in those occasions, especially occasions of distress or occasions when people need to, to, to find an answer to some of their problems or solutions to some of the problems that they have. For example, if somebody, <coughs> if somebody wants a dua answered, if somebody wants a dua answered, then Allah's one of his names is Mujib. One of his names is Mujib, which is the, the, the one who answers du'as. So they will say, Ya Mujib, Ya Mujib, Ya Mujib, Ya Mujib, Ya Mujib. And they will continue to say Ya Mujib because they want this du'a to be answered. And they have found, they have found that if they do this, then Allah is more likely to answer the du'as. If, if there's someone who's, who's lost, uh, uh, someone who, who uh, someone who needs to uh, wake up, someone who needs to wake up at a certain time. So, so they'll they'll say the word, they'll say the name of Allah, Yabaith. Ba'ith is the one who who makes you rise. So Yabaith, 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 and they found. Now this is not in hadith, but they found themselves in as their own experience. That if you use those names with the intention of getting what you want in those particular moments when you need it most, then Allah will, Allah will help you. Someone who's, for example, who's poor, who's poor, and they need to be enriched with some wealth. Allah's one of us, Allah's name is Mughni. Mughni, which is who enriches somebody else, who gives somebody riches or who provides them with wealth and so on. So to say, Ya Mughni, Ya Mughni, Ya Mughni, Ya Mughni, Ya Mughni, and to repeat that constantly, they have found that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to their aid with trying to enrich them with something they didn't have. So this is one thing to do with why some of them have said, Ahsaha means that you actually search for. You search for these names, meaning that you search for the occasion most suitable for these names and you will try and use those names in those, in those places. Now, inshallah, what we'll do is as we go along the names, I will tell you certain things that people have found. When I say people, I mean ulama, people who are close to Allah, they have, they have used these names in a certain way and they have found these benefits of these names. Again, if you're a person who doesn't want to do that and doesn't want to use a particular name, because it's not in the sunnah or something, that's your stance. But there's nothing wrong, I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong in you testing or trying these names out in certain occasions on your own accord. Because Allah has said, Walillahi lasma'ul husna. He has the best of names, He has the most beautiful names. So ask Him through these names. Now, now He didn't go into the tafsil, or he didn't, Allah didn't go into the explanation of Fad'uhu biha how to ask him, when to ask him, and so on. He's left it open for us. He's left it, over, uh, left it open for us. Just as you will find, even certain Sahaba, they did certain things on their own accord. They read certain things without prior, prior um, hadith that, that they received from Prophet ﷺ. They did it. For example, that famous hadith in Bukhari. Famous hadith in Bukhari where they, they, the Sahaba are on a journey and they pass by uh, a place uh, and, and some villagers come out and they say Hal min raq? Is there anyone amongst you who, who knows how to heal a person from the, snake of poison, uh, from, from the poison of a snake? So the, one of the Sahaba says If I do it for you, what will you give me in return? And he starts bargaining with them. Now, some of the other Sahaba that were with him, they were frowning and thinking, what is he doing? He's now bargaining that he's going to do this. So they waited until he bargained. He said, if I do it for you, you, you will give me 30, uh, I think it was goats, 30 goats or 30 sheep. So they agreed. So he came straight over. He saw the person who was bitten by a snake. He read Surah Fatiha, he read Surah Fatiha, but I think it was seven times, I think he blew onto the individual. I'm not quite sure if it was seven or it was one, but anyway, it's in Sahih al-Bukhari, where he, he blew onto the person after reading it. And through that, Allah gave shifa to this, this person. Now, when this happened, and they gave the 30, 
um, animals to, to this individual, they fell into a dispute. Now what's very interesting about this is, what's very interesting about this is, that of course the Sahaba, they, ha they were also, you know, half of them were frowning on this fact that, how can you do something like this? And this other Sahabi feels that, it's fine, you know, I, I, you know I, I had something in my mind where I would do this and I did it and it worked and now I'm going away with something that I didn't have. And they reached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to comment on this. So what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that it was completely fine for him to do that. And he said, if you've got any left, you may, you may want to include me into a portion of of, of, the, of the sheep or something that, that you've got. Uh, I think that there's one, one hadith uh, to do with that. And if it's, if, if, if at, by the least you want to say that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't reprimand the individual who did this. But my point of this hadith is that if there was a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that for the poison of a snake, you recite Surah Fatiha then either the Sahaba would have known that who were traveling with him, or they would have said, what's your dalil? What's your dalil? That you're going to do this? And he would have said, okay, I heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or I saw Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he did this on one occasion. But he didn't. And neither will you find any hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is using Surah Fatiha and he's curing someone from the poison of a snake. But what, what's, what does this whole hadith say? This hadith tells us that if somebody on an individual basis wants to use something from the Quran and Sunnah for whatever reason they want to, then it's completely fine. It's completely fine. As long as they, they, they have, okay, fine, later on Rasulullah agreed to this person, whatever he did, and it becomes part of the Sunnah anyway. But when he did it, when he actually did it, he didn't say, well, let me, let, wait, you guys wait, let me go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let me ask him, can I read Surah Fatiha for the poison of, <laughs> of a snake? You know, he, he didn't do that, he just went ahead and did it. So my point again here is, if people want to use the, the tajriba or the experience of the ulama before us, and if people want to use these names in a way that brings us benefit, then fine, go ahead and use those. Just like they found benefit, inshallah, you will find benefit. So here Imam Qurtubi says that one of the meanings of Ahsaha, whosoever will do Ahsa, what does that mean? Whosoever will investigate, continue to search for these names, continue to, continue, continue to go after these names, then they will enter paradise. In another narration, there, there is a hadith that says, Man hafidhaha. Whosoever will do hifz of these names. Now what does that mean? That means whosoever will memorize these names. Or it means whosoever will, who will guard these names. There's two meanings again here. In another hadith it says, Man hafizaha. And Imam Qurtubi says that um, this is a sahih, this is also a sahih narration or a, an authentic narration of the word man hafidah, which would mean what? Which would mean that you now memorize all the names from beginning to end, one by one. And this is one of the things, inshallah, I want to do through, this, through these lessons. That every time we, we, we come to a new name, we'll try and do it in the exact order of the hadith. Every time we come across a new name in the beginning of the lesson here, I want all of us to go through the names from the beginning up to that name. Is, is that okay? So one by one, it's, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take a bit of time to get through the 99. But one by one or two by two, because some, some weeks we might cover two, three names. And some weeks we might just not even cover a whole one completely. So as we go along the names, I want you with me to memorize the 99 names. Inshallah. So then we get the benefit of this hadith as well. If it means that you memorize the 99 names and you go to Jannah, then we get that benefit. In a, another, um, in, in another understanding of the Hafidh, which it, it, the meaning is guarding these names. What does that mean? It means that you bring in yourself, you bring in the sel yourself the qualities of these names. So for example, when you read Rahman and Rahim, you reflect on the names and you try and bring mercy into yourself. 
exactly. You bring mercy himself. For, for, for example, uh, there's a hadith about the rahimun, about those who have mercy. And those who have mercy, ar-rahimun yarhamuhumullah. Those who have mercy on the earth, Allah, who is the Rahman, has mercy on them. There's a hadith along those, uh, along those meanings. We'll come to that hadith when we cover Rahman, inshallah, particularly. But what does that mean? That means that Allah is Rahman, Allah is Rahim, Allah has mercy. So now, if I, have a, if I bring this quality of mercy inside myself, then Allah will have mercy on me. So, for example, the name Quddus, which means that Allah is absolutely pure. Absolute pure. So, I've got to bring purity in my life. But when it comes to something positive that I should have as a servant of Allah, I bring those. I guard those things within my life. Okay? But when it comes to something that I shouldn't have, like for example, the word mutakabbir, which is Allah has the, He rightfully has the, uh, the, the, um, the position to, to express His greatness over everything else. That's mutakabbir. But we don't have that right. We shouldn't be mutakabirin. We shouldn't be those people who are so proud of ourselves that we look down on, on others, that we feel others are lower than us. Well, Allah has that right. So when we come across that name, we should then think of ourselves as humble, that Allah is the mutakabir, and I should be mutawadi. I should be one who is absolutely humble in front of his, his nature. Is, is that clear? Yeah. So like that, along the names, we'll come to them. One of, the, one of the meanings is that we bring the quality of that name within our lives. Another meaning Imam Qurtubi says is to understand these names. Faham. Understanding of these names. Another one he says is to place every name within its right place. So for example, if your belief or your aqidah, and this, this, because these, these names will form our beliefs and our aqidah about Allah. When Allah has used a particular name for Himself and you believe it in its right form, and you don't go to one extreme or another extreme, that means that you have now done ahsaha, you have now um, completed what Prophet said that you have man ahsaha dakhl al jannah. Whosoever will now place, whosoever now will believe in these names in its proper form, then they will go to Jannah. Another one is to use these names to revere Allah. Believe and revere Allah. So that means that I know Allah's name, and by knowing Rahman, the quality of Rahman, by knowing Rahim, by knowing that He's so specific to His servants, by knowing He's Malik and He's the King, and by knowing He's Quddus and all these different names, I'm only going to have the Azama and the reverence of Allah in my heart. And the more I know about these names, the more I will reveal Allah. And that is the meaning of Man Ahsaha, whosoever will, will um, reveal Allah in His proper form by knowing these names, they will enter Jannah. And the last meaning he reports is that whosoever will, will, yeah, sorry, the last one I've already said, which is the practice upon these names. The practice upon these names. So, for example, when it is to do with um, uh, the, the woman who come to a name of, for example, Wali. Wali, when Allah is the guardian. For me to try and become a close one to Allah. Wali means close one. Qareeb means close one. So I try and bring myself close to Allah to practice these names when that person goes into Jannah. Okay, now Imam Qurtubi has got quite a long um, beginning introduction to this book. And what I want to do is, as I go through this book, I want to cover every week part of the introduction because it's quite a long introduction. But at the same time, I want to go straight to the names as well. So what I will do is every week I will do part of the introduction. I've done about a couple of three chapters. I've summarized three chapters of his introduction. And now I want to go straight to the name of Allah, the first name of the 99 names. So here, Imam Qurtubi says that the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, Allah, that name itself. This is, according to some ulama, according to some ulama, this is one. This is one of the greatest names. One of the greatest names, because Allah has started the Quran with this name. 
How has Allah started the Quran with this name? Guys. One. Bismillah. Part of Surah Fatiha is Bismillah Rahman Rahman. Part of all the others, there's, there's ikhtilaf, there's difference between ulama whether Bismillah Rahman is part of every single surah or not, but definitely about Fatiha, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. A lot of the ulama say it's part of it. Some say it's not part of it, but a lot of the ulama do say that it's part of, part of it. Allah has started with that. that in the name of Allah, Bismillah. Allah has also started, even if you say Surah, surah Fatiha, beginning the first name that appears in the Quran is what? Allah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So Rabb comes next to Allah. And there's a big hidden meaning in this. Allah said, because what Imam Qurtubi says later on, is, subhanAllah, he says that one of the qualities of Allah is to know Him as a Rabb. One of the qualities of Allah is to know Him as the Rabb, which is the provider. So if you look at the, if, if you know Allah, if you know Allah, you know Rabb. We're talking about the same being here. You know Allah, you know that He provides. So one of the things that you look at Allah, when you look at Allah is that you know that Allah provides. That's why most of the du'as of the Anbiya, they start with what word in the Qur'an? Most of the du'as of the Anbiya, what, what word do they start with? Rabbana. And Imam Qurtubi has extensively gone through many different um, du'as that start with Rabbana. He says, when the khutbah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he started the khutbah, he started with Alhamdulillah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wrote any letters, he started with the name of Allah. When Allah has told us about his beautiful names in Surah Al-A'raf, he said, Lillahi al-Asma al-Husna. For Allah are these beautiful names. So he's made this the basis. Allah is the basis of all of his names. When we find in, in, the, in the people of the past, because these names, a lot of these names, the, pe- uh, you know, the, the, the Makkan people, when Rasulullah came to them, they didn't recognize, all, they didn't recognize the, the, the other names of Allah. They knew Allah. They knew Allah. But they didn't know, for example, Rahman. They didn't know Rahman. So in the Quran, if you look in Surah Furqan, the 25th Surah of the Quran, verse number 60. You'll find Allah says, when they're told to prostrate to the Rahman, they say, Wamar Rahman, Wamar Rahman, who is the Rahman? This is the Makkan people around Rasulullah that they, that they, weren't, they, they weren't aware of. Who, who's this? Why is he using, you know, some of them even said, if Allah is one and he's saying Allah is one, then why is he using all these other names for Allah? Why is he using Rahman and, and so on? So you find that, Many of the people in the past didn't know some of these names. However, they all knew the name of Allah. So if you look in the people of Nuh, what the people of Nuh said, because Nuh was the first messenger onto the earth, alayhi salatu wasalam. In the Quran, Surah Mu'minun, the 23rd Surah of the Quran, verse number 24, you will find, they said to Sayyidina Nuh, alayhi salam, وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ If Allah willed, لَأَنزَلَ مَلَائِكَةً Allah would have sent angels down to us. When we haven't heard anything about this in our forefathers. So they said, Allah, if Allah will. So the name of Allah is there in the people of Nuh. When Hud alayhi salam, when, when he started to say to the people of Ad, people, the giants, he gave them da'wah. They said, Ajitana lina'bud Allah wahda. Have you come to us so that we may worship Allah alone? You come to us to worship Allah alone. So they knew the name of Allah. And again with, with, um, with different ummas, with different um, people, even with the Makkan people. Allah said to, the Rasul, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He said, these people who are around you, if you were to ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? They would say Allah. They will surely, definitely say Allah. This is in Surah Luqman, Surah Luqman, Surah number 31, verse number 25. Wal ard, Allah. They will definitely say Allah if you ask them who is created, who has created the heavens and the earth. But one thing Imam Qurtubi says, and he quotes an ayah of Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf, which is the 12th Surah, 
and verse number 106. وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ One of the things about not knowing Allah, see one is to, to not knowing Allah with the irfan, not recognizing Allah properly, is that you know Allah but you still assign partners with Him. You still assign partners with Him. So here you've got for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says that the Arabs or the mushriks, the mushriks, or the polytheists who were in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's time, they would they would say Allah, but they had statues and other things around them which they used to call all these other names, Lat, Ruzza, Manat, and so, and so on. And when it came to Allah, they recognized Him, but they but they recognized Him in a different way. They didn't see Him as the provider of everything. They didn't see Him as Rabb. They didn't see Him as the one who only had the soul worthy of worship. They didn't see that. They saw that, okay, we can worship you, Allah, and we can worship these idols. They saw, okay, we can get from you, Allah, but we'll get from all these other idols. So one of the things is not to know, one of the things of not knowing Allah properly is not to know the fact that you are possibly committing shirk or assigning partners with him in one way or another. So this ayah in the Quran, Imam Qurtubi uses to say, that we need, to, we need to know that all the 99 names are only describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all his qualities are within it. So he quotes a hadith in Muslim and Bukhari by Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu. This hadith says, this is a hadith in Bukhari um, 4816, in Muslim 2775 and in Ahmad is 3614. Where Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu he says, Ishtama'a inda al bayt thalathat nafar. There are three different uh, people who came to the Kaaba. Two people from the Quraysh came, and one Thaqafi, one person from the tribe of Thaqif, or Thaqifa he came, or Banu Thaqifa he came. Or it was the other way around, the two from Thaqifa came, and one, one was a Quraysh that came. And they were qalilun faquha qulubuhum. They were people whose hearts understood a little, had little understanding. Kathirun shahma butunuhum. But they were people who had a lot of fat on their stomachs. So the, this is in the hadith that there were fat people with little understanding sitting there. And one of them said, Allah Do you really think that Allah is hearing what we are saying? These are obviously polytheists. Do you think, really think that Allah is hearing what we are saying? Another one said, He hears yasma'u in jaharna wa la yasma'u in akhfayna. He hears us if we say things loudly but he doesn't hear us when we say things secretly. And they're saying this right in front of the Kaaba. And then another one said, hang on a minute, if, if he can hear us when we're saying it loudly, then surely he can hear us when we're saying it quietly. So they were, they were debating this in front of the Kaaba. And for anzal Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah revealed this verse of the Quran in Surah Fussilat, ayah number 22. وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَسْتَتِرُونَ أَنْ يَشْهَدَ عَلَيْكُمْ سَمْعُكُمْ وَلَا أَبْصَارُكُمْ وَلَا جُنُودُكُمْ You cannot hide, you cannot hide what your own hearing, what your own eyes, your own ears, what your own skin will witness against you on the Day of Judgment. You can't hide that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that when they were in doubt of what the, the real nature of Allah is. Now, another beautiful thing about it is that as long as someone on the earth is saying Allah, Allah, as long as someone on the earth is saying Allah, Allah, Qiyamah or the Day of Judgment can't come. The Day of Judgment cannot come. And this is a hadith in Bukhari where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Sahih al Bukhari, La taqumu sa'a wa ala al ardi man yaqulu Allah. The day of judgment will not come while on the earth there is someone who will say Allah. And in another hadith he says, La taqumu 
Sa'a hatta la yuqalu fil ardi Allah Allah. The day of judgment cannot come until no one on the earth remains to say Allah Allah. <clears throat> this is in various um, ahadith. And uh, Muslim is uh, hadith number 48, 148. Uh, and in his various other books like Imam Ahmad, Abdul Razak um, has also reported it. Okay. So this is another beauty of this, of this name. Now, there is another part to this which is the name of Allah, what is it made of? Because in Arabic, some of you who know Arabic, there is Alif Lam. Alif Lam comes to try and identify something with specifically. So, for example, if you said Kitab, means a book. But if you said Al Kitab, it means the book. So you make it, you identify it. So if you were to say this book, you will say, you won't say just Hadha Kitab. Or you can say Hadha Kitab, this is a book. But if you want to say this specific book, you'll say Hadha Al Kitab, you'll put Alif Lam there. So the debate amongst the scholars was, is the name of Allah, the Alif Lam in Allah, is it, is it specifically part of Allah's name? Or are we using it as an extension to the word, to his name La? Was his name La? And then we said Allah. What was the actual specific to that? Now, Imam Qurtubi says that most of the scholars, great scholars, including Imam Shafi'i, Imam Abil Mu'ali, Al Khattabi, Al Ghazali, Qadi Abu Bakr ibn Arabi, and so on. So there's quite a few names is mentioned. He's saying all of them are the, of the opinion that the Alif Lam there are part of his original name. They are no extension to his name. That is the reason why when we call Allah, we say and, and we we're using we're putting Ya in front of it. We're saying Oh Allah. We're you know normally in in. Um, Arabic, what you do is that you, you may drop the Alif Lam. So for example, if you're saying, if you're using any of the 99 names, 99 names apart from, apart from the word Allah, you will drop the Alif Lam. So for example, you will not say, Ya Ar-Rahman, Ya Ar-Rahim, Ya Al-Malik. You don't say that. You say, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Malik, Ya Quddus. But for Allah, the name of Allah, you have to say Ya Allah. You can't say Ya Allah. Ya Allah. I mean, some people say that as a, as a, uh, you know, it's, it's actually a, 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 it's actually colloquial to say that. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. What they're doing, what they really should say is Ya Allah, Ya Allah, as in calling him. But sometimes they, they, they use this as a phrase. Um, and, and they and they and they sort of almost miss out the Hamza Maktua or Hamza Qati or the or the, or the the part of instead of saying Allah they say Yalla and they miss out the A in that. And people do that, but the real way to call Allah is what Ya Allah. Just like you know when we when say some people say Mashallah Mashallah. It's actually wrong. The proper way to say what is is what Masha Allah. Masha Allah. That's the proper way of saying it. Or some people say, Inshallah, Inshallah. That's actually wrong. It should be, Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay? So please try and change that because it's, it's becoming a norm that people just say, Inshallah, Inshallah, and Mashallah, and so on. But it's supposed to be, Inshallah, Masha Allah. Imam so, um, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu has said that one of the, one of the parts to you know, the, the whole thing about Allah, he said it comes from Ilah. It actually came from Ilah, which is his, the, 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 the deity of Allah or him being worthy of worship. It comes from that. Some have said that the asl or the actual part of it is from wila which is the guardianship or closeness it comes from there some others have said that is from aliha ya'lahu which means when a person is when a person is in fear and they run to someone that they can get there that they can have get some peace from them or be safe and protected 
that's where this name co comes from. So the original is Ali Hayyallahu, which means a person is scared and they move to, they come to Allah, oh Allah protect me, and that's where the name of Allah comes from. So Imam Ibn Abbas says that in that ayah in the Quran, Surah A'raf, verse number 127, wa 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 he says there's another way of reciting this verse, وَيَذَرَكَ وَإِلَاهَتَك which means they fear you and they fear worshipping. Now, ibadatak, he's saying instead of ila, ila, instead of alihatak, it's ilahatak, which means it's the worship of Allah. So one of the names of Allah, Allah, what is, where does Allah come from? It means that it comes from worshipping Allah. Meaning that he only holds the right to worship, worship him and no one else. One of the beautiful things about this name, which Imam Ibn al-Hasar has mentioned is that you cannot use it for anyone. There are certain names that you can't use for anyone. There are certain names you can't use for anyone. For, for example, you can, you can say someone is, is Ghani, he's rich. Someone is rich. Huwa Rajul Ghani, he's a man who is rich. You can say that. Though Allah's name is Ghani, one of Allah's names is Ghani. So you can use that to describe others. However, there are certain names Allah has given no authority to anyone to use for anyone else. And one of those names is the name of Allah. One beautiful ayah in the, in the Quran to do with, because the name of Allah appears quite a lot in the Quran. The name of Allah appears extensively in the Quran and extensively in the Hadith. But one thing to reflect on, Imam Qurtubi says, is, is he gives a couple of ayats. One is, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Fatir, Surah Fatir, which is the 35th Surah, Ayah number 28. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Those who are people who have knowledge, they, they definitely are, are the people who fear Allah. So Allah, the word Allah should cause fear into a person. This is one thing that Imam Qurtubi is saying. Plus he says in the, in the Quran, Surah Al-Anfal, the 8th Surah, verse number 2. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The believers, when they hear, الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ When the name Allah is mentioned, hearts start to tremble. So the real way of having Allah in one's, one's thoughts and one, one's mind is that hearts will tremble just by knowing the name Allah. See, I remember one great one scholar, he said once in one of his um, lectures, he said, imagine if, you were, imagine if you were relaxed. Imagine if you were relaxed in, in your own sort of home, in your living room. You're just relaxed. And person comes and knocks on the door. Person comes and knocks on the door. So when they knock on the door, when knocking on the door, you, you just relax and say, who is it? Who is it? And if the person says, for example, it's, I don't know, he might say, you know, Zakaria, as a, as a name, he just says Zakaria. Now, you might say, Zakaria who? Which Zakaria? Right? So you're still relaxed. Whoever that name is, whatever that name is, okay, you might say, who is that? You're still relaxed. But he said, imagine that the person who knocked on the door says to you, when you say, who is it? And they say, it's a policeman. Now the moment he says a police, well, he might say police, Zakaria Patel, whatever the name is, right? <laughs> imagine he's, he uses a PC something before his name. If he uses that, you're not going to be still relaxing on your couch. You'll probably jump up. You think, what? What's a policeman doing at my door? What does he want from me? What have I done? What's he here for? Now, all these things go through your mind. Now the person behind the door, you haven't seen him. True or not? You haven't seen him. All you see is that you've heard a name. But by the two different descriptions, you either carry on lying on the couch 
or you jump up. What this scholar said, and Swanee said a beautiful thing. He said, Allah, we haven't seen him. Allah, we haven't seen him. Now, if Allah means uh, it's Allah, then you relaxed. You relaxed. But if Allah means Allah, and it means there are all these different qualities of what he can do and what he's about. If it means that, and you know who Allah really is, if you think of Allah as the one who's destroyed the giants, the one who has caused earthquakes, the one who you know, will smash rooftops, who will crumble rooftops onto people's heads, the one who, who can, who, whose name is Muntaqim, he avenges, the one who's, who's, who has a great amount of um, highness and, and so on. When you have all these different qualities with Allah, then Allah is not Allah. Allah is Allah. So his point was that we need to get to know Allah. We need to get to know Allah. Because without knowing his qualities properly, and without putting them all in front of oneself, you're only treating Allah just as any ordinary being. And if you're doing that, then you won't have fear in your heart. And coming back to this, this ayah in Surah Al-Anfal, the 8th Surah, verse number 2. When Allah said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ the believers, those people, they are those whom when Allah is mentioned, their hearts start to tremble. These are true believers. These are true believers. Subhanallah al-Azim, Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, when he was kana waqafan inda kitabillah, which means that if you quoted a verse to Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, if you quoted a verse to him, he would tremble. He would tremble and he would start crying and he would stop and he would ponder. That was the, one of the qualities of Amin al-Mu'min and Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab. Now, these days, you know, sometimes, even sometimes the Qur'an is being played. And people are just chatting, chatting, yapping, yapping, whatever. Whether someone even quotes the Qur'an. Someone says, you know, there's certain incidents where you take the Qur'an and say, Wallahi! And the Qur'an is in front of you, you hold the Qur'an. And people, there's people who still lie. There's people who still lie, whether they're even you know, in the masjid or whether they're taking the name of Allah, whether they're saying the word Wallahi. You know, say, taking the oath of Wallahi, you know how severe that is? Saying by Allah, I swear, which means that what? Which means that I've got no other witnesses now, but my only witness is Allah and I'm taking his name. And I'm saying Wallahi, by that Allah, who will re- we will return back to by that one who watched our incident and I have no other witness that Allah I use a witness now for this case here that's Wallahi now imagine people who lie with that on the day of judgment what will happen to them Allah will say to them what you took my name from the ghaib from the unseen and you made me a witness you made me a witness to, to your statement when it wasn't true and you want me to be merciful to you on this verse, subhanAllah al So, um, we, we're going to make a stop. That there's, there's a bit more to say with um, the name of Allah. And then inshallah, after this name, we'll move towards the name Rahman. Okay? So, if everyone, before we finish, we say, Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu. Say it. Huwa Allahu alladhi. Allahu as good with the val, val, the tongue goes underneath the top two teeth. Who Allah who levy? La ilaha illahu. Who are Rahman? That's it. So, okay, the, we're going to cover Rahman in a bit. Inshallah, we'll go up to that. But please remember this very. Who Allah who levy? Which means that there is, He is Allah. Who Allah? He is Allah. Allah, who? La ilaha, there is no other one worthy of worship. Illa who except him, who is Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Al Malik, Al Quddus. Inshallah, we'll go through these names. Are there any questions before we finish this session? Any question anyone has got to, to do with this session? No? Al Jazakumullah khair. Inshallah, I'll see you next week.